Welcome to the Hardcore Closer Podcast. I'm Ryan Steumann, founder of HardcoreCloser.com, and this podcast is all about helping you, the salesperson, close more sales. And look, whether you're selling cars, homes, financial services, consulting, whatever it is that you sell, this podcast is dedicated to help you generate higher quality leads, increase your closing ratios, and show you how to charge premium fees for the items you sell so you can get paid what you're worth. Welcome to episode 61 of the Hardcore Closer podcast. And look, I'm glad you're here. If this is the first time for you to be here, make sure you check all the previous episodes. There's at least 60 of them at this point. And uh, do me a favor. If you enjoy them, hell, even if you hate them, just go over to iTunes and uh, leave me a review. It's a really big deal to me that you do that. If you've been here before, then you know the drill. You got to get your ass. If you haven't already done this, man, you are slacking and it's just, it, you're embarrassing us, right? We need you to step up for the hood, dog. We need you to step up for the hood. I need you to head over to iTunes and uh, the podcast section and leave me a review. Look, I know it's a pain in the ass. I know it's hard to find it and I, iTunes doesn't make it easy. Look, I'm not doing this so that I can become like a number one show or have that kind of saying or anything like that. I, I need this because I want to help 300 million salespeople. And one of the ways that we're doing this, one of the ways that we're reaching hundreds of thousands of people, I just look, we're reaching, you know, 25 to 30,000 people every month just on iTunes. And it's one of our actually least syndicated places. We got SoundCloud uh, and YouTube that get tons of views over there and listens as well. But uh, the reason why I say that is I'm trying to get the word out so that I can help change people's lives like I have changed your life. If you've been here before and you're listening again, you obviously saw and found enough. Not you didn't see. You heard enough value uh, over here to want to come back and check out more. So just leave a review so that one day when somebody's searching through iTunes, they see that we have all these reviews. They could be down on their luck. They could be having a hard time. They could be the next thing you know, it they could listen to one of our episodes. They could be the top producer in their industry. They could go all the way to the top. I could inspire them. It could be your review that made them decide to subscribe and buy and, and uh, not buy, subscribe and listen. So look, just help me out. How are we ever going to reach 300 million people? I can't do it alone. How are we ever going to reach it without your help? So go over there. One of the easiest ways that you can do is leave me a review on iTunes. Like my buddy right here uh, it says. Uh, Jay Nash Real, right? It says, Ryan cares about you. Enough said. Five stars. I fucking do care. I really do. It says, my name is Jared DeVac, and I provide digital marketing service in the greater Nashville area. See, this is my motherfucking dog right here. See, this. pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. See, Robert picks these. I didn't know this was going to happen. But pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. This is a sales pro. I don't know Jared from shit. But I can already tell you, Jared, he's either an avid listener of this show or he knows how to sell this shit. Because check it out. He says, my name is Jared DeVonk and I provide digital marketing service to the greater Nashville area. Fuck whatever he says after that. The guy just got his business and his name plugged on a podcast that's going to get at least 100,000 uh, views this month. It's going to get 25,000 on iTunes. It's going to get another 50,000 on YouTube. And I just mentioned his name and what he does. So if you're in Nashville, he's your digital marketing guy. I would suppose he's a smart son of a bitch to do that shit. I've been trying to tell somebody to do it this way for Anyway, he said, Ryan Stuman's a killer, a killer of excuses and a killer of mediocrity. He'll provide value no matter where you're at in your career. So that's, that's good, Jerry. Good way to take action, man. I like that shit. Right? He lets you know who he is, where he lives, and what he does. It's easy to find him on Facebook. See, that's what the fuck I'm talking about. That's some good ass shit, man. That made my day right there, Jared. Good picking out the. I don't give him enough credit sometimes because, you know, I don't want him to become any more annoying than he already is. But good job, Robert, on picking that one out. That's a good example, right? Way to, way to, way to, have, way to spend some energy. I know you probably need to take a nap at this point or whatever. So, uh, right here, listen, I, I just want to say this. Glenn Shelton, hey, thanks for inspiring the topic. Uh, that we're going to talk about today. We asked the other day what people in our sales talk with sales group, uh, we asked what topics people would want to talk about. And Glenn Shelton uh, was the person that inspired what we're going to talk about today. But before we get into that, I want to ask you a question. And I want to talk to you about something before we just get into the content of the episode here. So are you the top producer in your office? Do you even want that job? Right. And, and when, I, when I mean the job, I mean the work. Right. Do you even want to do the work? I mean, you have to ask yourself, right? Are you willing to do what it takes to be the best in your market and your business or, or whatever? Are you? Some people aren't. Right. A lot of people say they will to their friends and shit like that. But then they go home and they're like, uh -uh, motherfucker, it ain't for me. But you have to get serious with yourself. Is that what you want? What do you want to be? Number five producer in the office? How many people in your office? Where do you want to rank? Do you want to rank in the middle or do you want to rank in the top? Some people are happy being number two or three. They're like, hey, number one works awful lot harder than I'm willing to work. And that's fine with me. I'm cool being two or three or 10 or whatever it is. Right now, for example, 
on uh, Russell Brunson's book, uh, Affiliate Launch, that he's doing. You know, I'm like number 30, and I'm okay with that. There's probably 1,000 people promoting that, probably 30,000 people promoting that right now. And I'm like number 30, and I feel good about that, right? But I don't want to strive to be number one. Our friend, uh, Duke Jeremiah, he's uh, number five right now. Robert, you seen that, the Duke Jeremiah picture <laughs> that's in the sales talk with Sales Pro Group? Yeah. He, have you seen that yet? Yeah, I've seen him. I've seen him. <laughs> Duke, Jer Duke Jeremiah coming in at number five. <laughs> Duke. Anyway, it's the inside joke, ladies and gentlemen. If you're not in the sales talk with Sales Pro Group on Facebook, probably you should go over there. And you should probably look up Duke Jeremiah, see what that guy is up to. I heard he's uh, cashing checks and breaking necks. But anyway, so uh, we ask in that group. And, uh, and so let me ask you a question. Sorry, I got a little sidetracked with the Duke Jeremiah thing. It's pulled up on my computer here. But, but where do you want to rank? And how serious are you about staying there or getting there or whatever it is? And listen, I know what it's like to work in the sales industry and be the top producer and not really have people to hang out with, right? Like when I sold cars, Travis was there. And, uh, but when I met Travis Plum, who works with us now at Break Free Academy, he, he didn't know anything about sales, man. It was like, he was like day fucking one. And nobody, and all the people that did know anything about sales that did get any kind of marketing stuff, they were super secretive about it. Very scarcity mentality and, and all that kind of shit, right? And it's just like it was hard. When I worked at the t uh, Texas Lending, you know, same thing. It was like none of those guys were the level of thinker that I was that, you know, they would complain that they were getting too many leads. And like I never complained about too many leads. I mean, it was just different. So it's hard. You think you're surrounding yourself with people doing great things, but we get stuck in our own little fishbowl. And we get stuck in our own little fishbowl. And here's the thing about goldfish being in fishbowls. A goldfish will grow to the size of its surroundings. So that little goldfish that's in the fishbowl, it can grow to be the size of the 20-pound carps that are out in the lake behind my house here. Uh, and I know you're thinking, damn, he is Texas in country. This motherfucker left downtown Dallas and went to the sticks. I live next to a golf course. So there's a golf course on the lake. It's got a bunch of these beautiful carp that are like giant goldfish, probably weigh 20 pounds. The difference is they're in a, a lake that's probably 10 acres big versus being in a little bowl. And so if you put yourself in that bowl, what happens is you only grow to the size of your surroundings in that bowl. They're only going to give you a couple of fish flakes a day, right? You put you, yourself in a big ass pond or maybe even the ocean. You can grow as big as you possibly want because you've got all the algae you can eat off the bottom as a goldfish. So the reason why I give you that analogy and talk about that is I, I've got – I've created the ultimate place for you to surround yourself with winners, for you to align yourself with people that are going places, and for you to bounce ideas off motherfuckers that actually get shit and have done shit and got shit. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to find people. You bounce idea off some dumbass that you work with. And then ain't never just a do nothing motherfucker that's just there collecting a check, right? You're over there trying to make a million dollars. They're trying to make 10,000 a year, right? We all know those guys. They say they're in sales, but what they should be doing is bussing tables at the local honky tonk and shit like that, right? And so you get surrounded by those people and then you get stuck in this fucking bowl and you don't ever grow financially. You don't ever grow uh, like, uh, uh, like not spiritually, but like mentally. You don't ever grow like you surround yourself with these, like especially most of us in sales surround ourselves with salespeople that are out of shape and sitting behind a desk and, you know, going bald and miserable as fuck. Man, you can't get stuck around those people. And look, I, if you're overweight or out of shape and all that, that's your fault, man. You'd be like, dude, Stu is picking up, man, get your ass up. Get your, my shit hurts every day, man. Every fucking bit of my body hurts every day. When I roll out of bed in the morning, it is fucking painful. I'm talking about like you hear shit in my body go <laughs> like I'm fucking zipping something up first thing in the morning when I roll out of bed. Right. I can't even scratch my ass without it hurting in the mornings. But guess what? I don't take painkillers. Guess what? I still go work out. Right. I know that some food that we got to eat tastes like shit, but I want to make sure that I'm healthy. I'm here for my kids and everything else. It's like I said, there's no excuse. But you, when you surround yourself with people that aren't living on that level, that aren't all in, what happens is you get stuck to the size of the fishbowl. I'm going to invite you to the lake. And we call that Break Free Academy Entourage. You go over to breakfreeacademy.com forward slash entourage. Sign up. I put the big fish in the pond for you. I've got people back there in the group that are doing $200 million a year in sales. I've got people back there in the group that are running companies that do over a billion dollars a year in sales. And we've got guys that, that are making ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 in commissions a month, all the way to people that are making six figures and seven figures monthly and annually. 
And so I invite you to step up to another level of people, step into another social circle where if you're an insurance agent, you could kill it in there because there's tons of realtors and loan officers that will give you referrals. If you're a property manager, a property flipper, if you provide construction services, a roofing person, some sort of general contractor, if you sell financial services, dude, if you sell cars, it doesn't matter. Like there is a network back there of people that are trading referrals left and right, and you got to be a part of it. Go over to Break Free Academy dot com forward slash entourage quit being a bitch sign up for our program how about that for a sales pitch all right so let's talk about the uh the program the program today is about uh seven ways to effectively market to your existing customers without seeming needy right because that's like one of the biggest problems that salespeople have we don't want to look needy because when you look needy motherfuckers won't send you business if they know you need it them evil bastards they won't give it to you you know it's true if you go into a meeting looking like a desperate salesperson that ain't close shit in six months and ain't going to be able to buy lunch if you don't fucking make this deal happen, they will make sure it don't happen for you. It's the truth. I don't know what the fuck it is. I don't even think they mean to do it consciously, but it happens. People love to see human suffrage. You think, oh, that's just very morbid, right? Shit. You ever been in traffic where every motherfucker in the lane slows down to look at the person that's dead from the crash? Dude, we fucking something about us. We like fucking human suffering. I'm I'm just here telling you the truth, right? You can get a little bit of weird about it and think, well, he's, he's not playing nice, but I'm just here to tell you the truth. And if you look needy, the customers will not buy from you. It's like it's this natural selection thing, right? Because we know if you look if like in the animal kingdom, if you look sick, they won't fuck with you. And the animal kingdom has a, a, a baby that's mentally handicapped or it's missing a limb or an arm or something of that nature. Uh, they don't they just let it die. They don't mess with it. Right. It's shark bait. Right. It's bear bait. Whatever it is. They just don't mess with it. We're, we're different here, but we still have that natural instinct. that's like, oh, man, it ain't right. Leave it alone. It's weak. They know you're a weak salesman. They don't want to do business with weak people. Meanwhile, when you fly in there and you act like you don't need motherfucker, it's just like getting chicks. Ladies, don't get mad. I've had my fair share. I'm qualified to speak on this subject. But it's like getting chicks, right? If you act like you don't need her and you act like, you know what, if she ain't cool, you'll bang your friend. Guess what? She, she'll, be, she'll be your girl. She'll be loyal to you forever. The minute that you let her know that she's the only person that you ever want to be with and you're just like, you can't stop thinking about her and you're like, you get friend zone quick as a motherfucker, man. You guys know it's true out there too, right? The only people who don't know that, tri that statement is true are motherfuckers out there in the friend zone right now. Hang on, hang on. Hang on, let me, let me smoke one for y'all. A little something for my people in the friend zone. I got that fire to that mango, mango vaporizer, right? The legal shit, the legal shit. We talking about the, the mango. But anyway, so here's the thing. You've got to go into a cell situation without being needy, right? You can't appear desperate. You can't appear like, dude, like you're, you're, you're going to have some dudes break your kneecaps over some bad gambling debt if you don't fucking handle your business right. And so here's the thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lace you up, nephew. I'm going to hook you up with seven ways to effectively mark to your existing customers without seeming needy. We're talking about referrals here, right? And we're talking about repeat and referral business. So let's talk about number one, send DMs to them on social media. Man, you know, everybody these days, like there was a time on social media, like 2012, 2015, those years that people didn't really engage much on social media because they were scared what kind of log Facebook was keeping of their actions. And nowadays, pretty much, you know, it's not even about likes. When we make a post on Instagram, we get like 3,000 likes or some shit like that. Who gives a fuck? Likes don't even really count anymore. When I see 3,000 people like my post, guess what? That's awesome. I'm glad they like it. I made it so you would like it. But I don't go through and see who those 3,000 people are. I'm not doing it. When I make a post on Hardcore Closer uh, fan page on Facebook and we get four or 500 likes, and uh, which is crazy because we have 25,000 people on Instagram and we get 3,000 likes on average per deal. It's like 2,500. But yet I have 150,000 people on Facebook and we get like 200 likes per deal. Uh, it's just like, I don't know, Facebook, man, it's a motherfucking hater. Anyway, so on the Facebook page, get all these likes and all these people that comment and share the stuff. And I really don't see who it is. I'm not going through and going, who are these 3000 people, right? Our machinery, our, our technology, I guess I should say not machinery, our technology sorting through them and knowing who to tag and who to follow and retarget and all that. That's another episode. But here's the thing. 
when someone sends me a DM, I almost always see it. And so if you send me a direct message to the Hardcore Closer fan page, I'm going to check it. You know, there was a period of time to where I left a reply on, but now I got me and a team of people. We're checking it. And if it's a good one, it comes directly to me. And so here's the thing. When you're sending somebody a DM on social media, what you want to do is you want to use something we call social recon. Now, social recon is uh, you can find all about it. Just go to hardcorecloser.com and in the search bar there, just enter social recon. It'll pull it up. There'll be a dude camouflage face, I believe, is what the, the picture is. But anyway, it'll tell you about it. But basically, you're just seeing what so you go and you look at somebody's wall and you see what kind of activity they've been up to before you send them a DM. And you go in with some strategery. That's my buddy. The president, George W. Bush, would say, you got to have a little bit of strategery. You know, fool me once, can't get fooled again, that guy. So you got to have some strategery. You're going to go into the page, uh, somebody's profile, and you're going to look at it. You're going to see what they've been up to. They've been at the zoo lately. My buddy, David Betbedal, he was just at the zoo a couple of days ago, and he was at the giraffe uh, exhibit. I was like, hey, man, I was there a few days ago. Right? He's, an, he's a past customer. I'm following up with him, keeping that relationship. David, you're still on my damn list, son. We're going to get you back. <laughs> and so – you know, I'm following up with him. I, I go, I do a little social recon. I see that he took his kids to, uh, so there's a Plano Safari place out here where I live. I had no idea. Fucking everything's bigger in Texas, right? Fucking A, get a hat. And uh, so anyway, I, I find out there's this Plano Safari. We go to talking about it, ask him how business is. Turns out he's doing a few things a little bit differently than before. And blah, Boom, the next thing you know, we're having this conversation, but I was strategic about it. The good news is Dave had been a client for a while, so he knows how this shit works. He's like, right now, you, uh, you're, you're totally... Uh, using your magic on me, aren't you? <laughs> right? So this is not going to come as a surprise when he listens to it. But DMs are important. And then here's another key, and I'll, I'll move on to the next one, about sending someone a DM on social media. You do your social recon. You have that casual conversation. And guess what? Then all of a sudden, Facebook shows you their post, and it shows their post, you your post to them in the news feed because you guys have a created affinity. That's uh, another program, another time and place to explain how the Facebook algorithm works. But basically just know that this good juju between you and the person that you're talking to on there. Uh, number two, you want to recommend them on LinkedIn. This is powerful, y'all. Powerful Joe Rogan shit right here, you guys. Okay. Think about this. On LinkedIn, God damn it, people. I, just let me take a deep breath for a minute. Fucking smoke some more of this fucking thing. Yeah. All right. So on LinkedIn, please stop doing this. Please. Please stop saying, <coughs> Ooh, that was going. Got a cough to get off, ladies and gentlemen. Please stop saying congratulations on the work anniversary. I don't know when the fuck I started this job, nor do I give a fuck about an anniversary to a job. I'm not married to this motherfucker. So and I don't need a million people sending me a canned message. So don't do that shit, you guys, okay? That's the equivalent of liking shit on Facebook. It don't stand out. Matter of fact, cause a motherfucker like me to quit checking LinkedIn messages, okay? Another thing that you don't want to do, so you don't want to tell people happy birthday. You don't want to tell them happy work anniversary. You don't want to say congrats on the new job. Fucking everybody does that shit, right? That sheep shit, ah, ah, everywhere. Ah, ah, that's goat boy shit, okay? We don't need none of that. Instead, Go on there and recommend them. Talk about your experience. Recommend their business. Recommend them as a person. Give them a raving review that they'll want to fucking post your shit all around their network, right? When you say, hey, it was such a pleasure working with this person. They do everything in a timely manner. The service was second to none. They're handsome, wealthy, awesome, well-dressed, well-groomed, well-smelling, the best thing like you could ever imagine. I just want to just want to love them to pieces and blah, blah, blah. You just go on and on and on and on, right? They're going to show that testimonial everywhere. You're probably going to wind up on their website. They're going to definitely leave that bitch pinned to the top of LinkedIn. And so what happens is you created that affinity with them. And anytime they think about what it is you sell, they're going to think about you because they're going to be like, dude, this person left me a raving recommendation on LinkedIn. And you know what LinkedIn does, right? When you, when you leave somebody a recommendation, it sends them a message and that message stands out instead of saying congratulations on the work deal or fucking all the other dumb shit that people just sheepishly send on LinkedIn, what it does is it say, hey, Ryan Stuman has recommended you. I mean, that's powerful. That's a different message. Not very many people do that. Ryan Stuman has written a testimonial about you. Most people don't do that shit. And so you get an opportunity to stand out. So go on and recommend them on LinkedIn, y'all. Number three, utilize client groups on Facebook. Dude, if you're not doing this, you're totally missing out on big money. You should have every single person you've ever done business with 
and every single person you're in the process of doing business with in a Facebook group. It doesn't have to be 52,000 people like what's in uh, Sales Talk with Sales Pros. You just need to have a group where you're adding your people to it. And don't make it the Ryan Stuman's customer group. Name it the, you know, uh, su support for XYZ, like tech support for, you know, consultants or tech support for salespeople, right? Like every sales, every person that's ever been in Break Free Academy ever, like that's ever gone through Break Free Academy is in a group. They're in a group. There's, a, uh, there's like a thousand of them. And anytime somebody has a question, they ask each other. Anytime somebody needs something, they ask each other. Uh, anytime that, that I've got new material that pertains to them, I make sure that I get it to them and everything else. So, you know, I've got a group where all my clients are. Now, if I run a special, if I'm doing something outside of the box, if I need some additional help or if I need a testimonial or a guinea pig or whatever the fuck, I've got all my people in one spot to where I can go back there and I can say, hey, we're dropping Break Free Academy Entourage. If you guys would like to continue this process on a monthly basis, hey, we're looking for a few more spots in the tribe. Hey, guys, here's a new blog post that I wrote. And I'm constantly staying in front of those people. They appreciate it because I come every time with a damn gift, right? I don't just show up with my hand out. So give me more money. I always go and I give forward. So you need to be utilizing clients on Facebook because it's a captive audience of people that you've already made happy. All right. Number four, you need to retweet them. Like not everybody's on Twitter, but the people that are on Twitter, they like it. That's their thing. You've got really two types of people in this world. We've got Facebookers and Twitterers. And the Facebookers, they do other stuff too. They're usually on LinkedIn and Instagram, but the Twitterers, the tweeters, man, they just stay there. So if you've got clients that like like uh, my buddy Dustin Black is in the music business. A lot of his people that are in the music business, they revolve around Twitter because that's like what the celebrities and stars do. Because basically, you think about it, if you're not somebody popular, you get on Twitter, you're just sending a fucking text message to anybody who's willing to read it, right? But if you're a star and you've got a following and people want to see your stuff, so like my buddy Dustin Black, for example, that's got all these guys like Morgan Whalen and and uh, the Rascal Flats and stuff that he hangs out with, way, way cool dude. And so... He's got all that going on uh, when he needs to reach out to a celebrity or whatever. If he wants to follow up with some of the musicians that he's done business with, all he's got to do is reach out to him on Twitter. Uh, a lot of CEOs are that way. If you sell to the Fortune you know, 2000, um, then the same thing. You, you're, a lot of your CEOs are going to be on Twitter, uh, and they're not going to really be uh, on anything other. Maybe they'll be on LinkedIn, but the idea is for you to retweet them. And you think about like what retweeting really is, is it's, it's basically sharing them. So the same thing can apply to Facebook or LinkedIn, like share their status. Anybody can like it. Anybody can uh, sh uh, comment on it, but the people that share them are the ones that count. I'm telling you, they get the most attention. Think about it. When someone shares your post, that's when you get the most attention. All right. Number five, send them a gift. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, we have yourfreealarm.com. And uh, when we launched yourfreealarm.com, I reached out to all my mortgage and uh, real estate and insurance people. And I said, hey, uh, you know, we got these alarms that we can give you a free security system plus the uh, installation absolutely free. And, uh, and then for certain people that send a certain amount of volume, we worked out deals where they got our products for free and stuff like that as well. And so I just reached out and was like, hey, I got a gift for your people that'll make you look like a hero. You hit your people up and you tell them now all of a sudden you've got the hookup on free home security so you can keep them safe at night. You look like a hero. I'll send you some money for sending me the business or I'll send you a couple of autographed books or whatever the arrangement was with that individual person. But I basically sent them a gift. You can do the same thing. You can get on Amazon. And uh, this is what I used to do for real estate agents after I met them for lunch, right? Back in the old days, motherfuckers, before social media, don't be judging me. Be like, oh, shit, did he just say meeting real estate agents for lunch? What the fuck happened to Stu, man? I'm still here. I'm talking old day shit. What I would do is I would meet them for lunch. And uh, if I liked them, if I thought that they were somebody who actually had business that could do business with me, I would go and I would order them. Back then it was Barnes & Noble and I would ship them a book. And uh, usually it was like The Millionaire Next Door. Great real estate uh, book. And, uh, and so I would send them something like that. Then I would follow up with them, make sure they got the gift. You know, you may not have closed, uh, you may not have talked to the person that you closed a home for, uh, or you sold a car to for the last two or three years, but you send them a gift in the mail. They'll hit you up. I promise you a physical gift, a book it doesn't have to be, you get books for 89 cents. You know what I'm saying? Like you get used books on Amazon, cheap, way cheaper than what we used to do at Barnes and Nobles. Uh, number six, comment on their status. Hey, you know, like I said, it's it's going to get better than a like. A like is the least paid attention. It's the least liked thing, strangely enough. In a strange turn of ironic events, likes are fucking unlikely <laughs> to do anything. So anyway, comment on people's status. But here's the key to commenting on people's status. Like, Go through and talk to your old people. 
Okay. Like, so you've got your old people mean your closed clients. Okay. You go through, you've got a list of closed clients and you go through, you look them up on Facebook. You should be friends with everybody on Facebook. At the very least, you should be connected with all of them on LinkedIn. But I recommend connecting with them everywhere you fucking can, because anytime that they turn a corner, you need to be right there being like, uh, remember I sell this in case you know somebody, but in a cool way. Right. And so commenting on their status and engaging them, it's going to help them consistently see your post because your posts are the ones that fucking matter. So if you keep a list of people, we'll call it a dream list. And uh, this could be closed clients. This could be prospects as well. But we'll call this the dream list. And you're going out there and you've got this dream list of people that you're constantly leaving comments on. And the key to the comments is ask questions so they engage with you too. Ask questions. What'd you think about it? How did that make you feel? What was that like? Would you do it again? Should I go check it out? Ask questions. That's what fucking people are there to engage. Create engaging content. Engaging content ends with a question mark. And number seven, write about them. Now, this could be tricky because some of you can't write for shit. I get it. I get it. I used to couldn't write for shit either. You know how I got good at writing? I fucking practice. You know, I got good at making podcasts. I fucking practice. You know, I got good at making videos. I fucking practice. You know how I got good at basketball? I, I, I practice. I'm still not good at it. But anyway, writing is different, man. Writing is like, I, you know, these days I look like Stevie Wonder of the piano behind the keyboard over here. I don't even have to look at the damn thing. Robert's all the time telling me, he's like, dude, you got heavy hands. You're just over there beating the shit out of your keyboard. I'm surprised that thing still works after all this time. So, you know, like that's, that's my terrible Robert impression, but we're going to go with it. Y'all don't know. And so anyway, I'm like, you know, consistently writing because I'm practicing because I know we live in the social world, LinkedIn, Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, everything's based around text. So I want to be sure that I'm good at it. So you can write about people on space like medium. You can write about them and tag them in a post on LinkedIn. You can write a blog or an article about them, or you can write a blog on LinkedIn. They've got those articles that you can write on LinkedIn about their business or your experience with them, and then you tag them in it. And dude, people, like there's this association when you see your name in print, it makes you feel good. So if you write about them, whether it's a post or a blog post or an article in the local newspaper, you make a video about them. If you talk about specific people, like if you've noticed through this, I've name dropped several of my clients and things like that throughout the uh, the course of this podcast. Same thing, right? I'm talking about them, right? This is going to make them feel good. Dustin Black's going to hear this. He's going to go, my boy, man. Old Stu is always looking out for me. By the way, if you need to move, Black Tie Mover is the best in the world. Look it up, blacktiemoving.com. Uh, and then, you know, David Bapadal, same thing. Talk about him. He's going to hear this. He's going to be like, man, I need to take Zoom into lunch. I know what's going to happen. My phone's going to ring any day now. But so you want to write about them, talk about them, you know, let them know that you appreciate them and that, that you were like, you, you they, you're happy that you were able to do business with them. The last thing you want them to do is move on and forget. Okay. So let me give you a quick recap. Number one, send them DMs on social media. No fucking dick pics. God damn it. Number two, Send them a recommendation or a review on LinkedIn. Number three, utilize client groups on Facebook. It's got to be Facebook because that's where the people are the most engaged at. Uh, and if they need help from you or anything else, you can service them right there. You can add some of your referral partners back there to help them out and make life easier for them too. It can really work out well for you. It's worked out well for me. Number four, retweet and share them. Number five, that's uh, number four is retweet and share them. That's like, you know, share their posts, retweet their tweets on the tweeter. Uh, number five, send them a gift in the mail. Uh, I believe that that's huge. It's always worked really well for me. Number six, make sure you're commenting on their status. And number seven, write about them, whether it be in Medium or whether you send a tweet out there, write an article, blog post, or whatever. So, hey, make sure you head over to elevatortothetop.com and grab your free copy of my best-selling uh, book, Elevator to the Top. Man, you're going to love that thing. It's everything you need to know from day one uh, of sales all the way up into retirement. You can get a free copy right this second by going over to Elevator to the top. And you can get the show notes and resources from this episode over at hardcorecloser.com. Make sure that you're signed up over there. So you're on my email list so that you can keep up to date. We send an email out every single week with the latest blog posts, podcasts, videos, and all that good stuff. And other than that, I'm out of here.